Hey, good morning there, friends. Welcome to your side quest contact and to part 19 of our Let's Make an Adventure series. Um, we're getting very close to wrapping up Act 1 of this adventure, going through uh, our, our, our our first level contact NPC allies that our, uh, our, our players are going to be encountering and uh, getting mixed up with. And we're going to finish off the last one of these, our, our, uh, hip, our, our GIF sorcerer. Now we've got we got the pieces already put uh, kind of you know chosen. Now we got to fit them together, kind of come up with a sequence of events. How does all this uh, work? So let's kind of recap what we have. We have this GIF folk sorcerer Grumpo, right? And this gold, gold, uh, folk, <laughs> sorry, GIF folk sorcerer um, is a folk hero um, on based off of a lie. This this uh, Grumpo went into the jungle called upon by these uh, by the, the magic emanating from a dragon egg um, and attempted to steal that dragon egg from the, the tribe of Firbolg who were guarding it. Uh, that prompted outrage. The Firbolg escaped, got back to his town. Grumpo got back to his town and um, and, uh, and prepared the uh, the townsfolk for an attack, which did come. The, the Firbolg were that incensed at the uh, at this attempted theft that they just launched an attack on the town. And then we have the the uh, Grumpo getting the town ready to fend off that attack, and thus uh, successfully, and thus looking like a, a big hero. So what's going to be happening now? Let's let's first talk about why how the players are here, why the players are are here um, in this in this town. So let's kind of start off with why are players here? Now, if like any any of the other starting points, if you have a player who is the same race, the same same theme as this NPC or that this town uh, represents, that would be a good place for that group to start because you already have a connection there. So maybe PCs who are GIF or live in a small town. Now for Ingruza, our bugbear, she lives up in the city. So that's in a big city, big metropolis area, and this setting is more small town. And Kimchek, our Hadozi, uh, lives in a uh, in a treetop uh, town inside, like the jungle, <clears throat> inside the jungle. So here we have a small town. So maybe the players just prefer not a big urban, you know, not starting off in a big urban setting, but they just prefer a small town. Um, and again, if you have some kind of connection to this setting or to this scenario already, then we have a good spot. But if they're not already starting, let me make a note of that. Any. PC connection to the area, people, terrain, etc. Like if you had a ranger in the group, this would be a good place to start because it's closer to the wilderness than the the city is. So you know, think things like that. But let's say they don't start here. What's going to get them there? So if they've already if, if they've already been working on the uh, the Fringruza the, the Fringruza um, scenario again for Ingruza could uh, have uh, could be wanting to warn this town of the upcoming goblinoid situation um, brewing in the jungle so for Ingruza may have allies or friends in the town she wants to warn and m maybe she enlists the players help to do that Now let's say they're working with the the Kimchek scenario, our Hadozi warlock. <clears throat> if they're dealing with that scenario, then we could have a situation where maybe the Deathlock White escapes, right? Because you know the the zombies themselves uh, that the Deathlock White controls, you know, they're going to fight until they're zero hit points because they're just mindless zombies. But the Deathlock White um, is intelligent, uh, seeks to survive, and may not fight to the death. So if that happens, if the Deathlock White escapes, then maybe it flees to this town and the players pursue it. Players can pursue Deathlock White from Kimchek scenario if Deathlock White escapes. 
and that's what it's going to want to do, right? It's the, the Deathlock White is not going to want to just sit around and fight to the death. It might even use its zombies as cover so it can escape if things start looking bad. Like, I'm thinking if that, if in that final battle with, uh, the, uh, with uh, the Deathlock White and its zombies, if, because it controls six, I'm, I'm sorry, it controls a dozen, so 12. So I'm thinking if, if six of those zombies fall in pretty rel pretty quick order, like there's not much of a fight, like the players get lucky, they have come up with a good solution, and they take out a good number of those zombies up, you know, pretty quickly, then Deathlock White is definitely going to be thinking of using the other zombies as cover to escape. Because uh, you, know, you didn't expect that, right? Like half of his zombies gone like in, in pretty quick order, that's something to be concerned about. But if the zombies and him are are uh, and, and the Deathlock White are you know, able to you know keep fighting and doing well, then yeah, there may not be need to escape. So if Deathlock White escapes and flees to Grumpo's town, because remember, remember the Deathlock White can disguise self. And blend in with the populace. Maybe by now your players have figured out a way to detect this. You got a paladin in the group. They could, you know, they can divine sense around so they spot, you know, undead and such. Because that, that's what it is. It is undead. But yeah, the, it would give them. It would give. It would lead. It would have one scenario leading into another. And we mentioned earlier how these scenarios don't have to be run one at a time in any order. They're fluid, right? So, you know, uh, the players could be working on one scenario, get wrapped up in another as they're still working on one scenario, and then things can kind of just keep snowballing around that. Don't have to, it doesn't have to be linear. And in fact, you kind of don't want it to feel linear because then the players feel railroaded. They say, okay, this is what I have to do. I have to do this because this is what the game, t uh, the, the Dungeon Master says I have to do. But kind of run them concurrently so the players have a feeling that they're, they're in charge of their choices and their destiny. Okay, so we got some good ideas on why the players get here, how the players are here, if they've started here, if they've come here for some reason. So now that they're here, what's happening? What I think would be a good idea is to have, it could be festival time. It's always good to have a festival in a game. A lot of cool things can happen in a festival. And, they're so, and it's the one year anniversary of the Furbolg attack. Of, it's going to be, the, they're, they're, going to, they're going to call it a vicious Furbolg attack. It was terrible. These savages from the woods came through, came out of the jungle, and just started fighting. Luckily, we got this really cool gif uh, Grumpo sorcerer here who helped us out, taught us, you know, got us prepared. But you know, we all, you know, we, you know, we know that's not really, really happened. There's, there might be plays. They might have, uh, they might have some eff, uh, furbolg and effigy. Pinatas, maybe burn some. And with Grumpo, the center and star of it all. And then all under false pretenses. So how did this? Uh, how did this? What did this getting prepared for the furball attack look like? Because we just got a sorcerer right here, right? We got a level one sorcerer. It's a gift, but uh, I'm thinking maybe this gift knows a thing or two about how to prepare a, a fight. Um, maybe we dug some trenches. Maybe we uh, we, uh, we we made some stakes out of trees and, and planted the stakes in the trenches. Got some arrows ready. Uh, you know, taught them how to shoot. You know, bows and arrows as best as he could, and just kind of got them ready to uh, withstand this. Uh, this attack. Now, I'm not thinking this is a huge pitch battle or anything. I'm not. We're not like having thousands of like soldiers lined up against each other. No, we have maybe a couple hundred of these warriors coming out of the jungle, uh, clashing against this town's uh, defenses, um, the the fortifications, the trenches, the arrows, and such. And it's more of a small scale battle. But the town folk are victorious, right? They, the 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 have to retreat, um, and uh, they and. Um, and then, yeah, they celebrate, and the Grumpo is their hero. Now, 
So we got this festival going on. Our players can get wrapped up in the festivities, have a good time. They can talk to Grumpo. They can make contacts. They can do things in this city, in this town that they would like to do uh, during this festival. So what, are, what were our counters? Here we are. So we came up with Violet Fungus and a dragon. They yeah, had the copper dragon. Because by now, our, car, our egg that Furbolg wanted to steal has been hatched. Now, I want to take a look at the Furbolg leader. Let's go find her. Gailene, I think we called her. Yeah, here we are. Now, the the town's perception of Gailene is this ruthless uh, savage from the jungle, right? Because you know, this has been this has been uh, propped up propped up by uh, Grumpo. Oh, these savages! Oh, I mean, you're you're so lucky. I was here to protect you. That sort of thing. Um, but yeah, they're they're not savages. They're they're nature people. So we have Gailene here. Let's take a look uh, quickly at her for a bulg ranger. Okay, so we have some. Uh, you know, oh, did I? Oh, got to equip my inventory. Let's go some leather, armor, short swords. Okay, yep, leather, short sword, unarmed strike. Okay, actions in combat. Okay, let's find some features again. Okay, we've got some favorite enemies, right? So humanoids would be good, because, yeah, you know, these humanoids came in. They tried to steal this precious thing. Uh, natural explorer. Couldn't find jungle, so we just substituted forest. Same type of thing. Archery fighting style, so really good with her archery attacks. And where's our racial traits? Okay, we gave her ability, score increases, humanoid, walking speed, for bulk magic. Okay. Alright, so let's take a look here. Once per long rest, you can cast detect magic dis and disguise self. Oh. Oh, look at that. A lot of people can disguise self. I love disguise self uh, characters because it's kind of like a... It becomes more like a... An investigative spy story, sort of. Uh, where was I? And you can you can see him up to three feet shorter or taller. You can also cast these spells using any spell slots you have. Okay, and we chose I think we chose wisdom for this. So detect magic, long rest, disguise self, long rest. Hidden step. Oh, you can magically turn invisible two times per long rest. It lasts until your next turn or until you attack. Mm, that's pretty handy. Speech of beast and leaf. You can communicate in a limited manner with beast, plants, and vegetables. They can understand your words, but you cannot understand them. Then you have an advantage on charisma checks on them. Alright, that's good. That's good. And she, and I'm just kind of thinking out loud as I try to piece it all together, she was guarding this egg, this copper dragon egg, or her and her tribe, I should say. So you know what I think would be a good idea? Is during this festival, Galen, because she also knows it's, it's the one, now for her, it's the one year anniversary that, uh, since um, you know this uh, this gift came into her her uh, tribe and tried to steal this dragon egg. Um, so different perspective on her on what this anniversary means for the gift and the townsfolk. It's the you know celebrating the, you know defending against the the jungle folk, and for these fur bulk, it's the one year of anniversary of an insult. So I think that Gailene here is going to go into the town disguised to check things out see what's going on here because the dragons you know um, hatch now it's a wormling it hangs out with them in the uh, out there uh, in the jungle um, and, the, and the players are going to eventually come uh, uh, come into that so okay so that's where we're, that's where we're going to go with so far okay so festival time grumpo center okay here we are okay so Gailen and I don't know if I'm spelling that consistently but you get the meaning we'll be visiting 
spying disguise self on the town during the festival. Now our players, let's go I'm gonna take a look at disguise self again. Self, including clothing, armor, weapons, and other belongings on your person look different until the spell ends. When does the spell end? It lasts for an hour. Is this a concentration spell? I don't know. I can't see. Okay. Uh, we'll find out. Let's see. You can't change your body type, so you must adapt a form that has the same basic arrangements and limbs. Okay. Unless you use an illusion. The changes wrought by the spell fail to hold up to physical inspection. So, for example, if you use a spell to add a hat to your outfit, objects pass through the hat, and anyone who touches it would feel nothing but would feel your head and hair. To discern that you are disguised, you can use an action to inspect your appearance and must succeed on an intelligence investigation check against your spell DC so they can get investigation if they got that. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. So it's for an hour. So with the I'll gotta click to use. Maybe mean click use. That's okay. Okay, so it's not concentration. Okay, so it's just for one hour. So getting to the town, I'm just thinking of how she gets to the town and how she blends in. Because we also have, what is it, the see, detect magic, hidden step. All right, as a bonus action, you can magically turn invisible two times per long rest. This lasts until the start of your next turn or until you attack. Make it a damage roll for someone to make a saving throw. Okay, so how does she get here? So I'm thinking she's going to arrange her uh, and stealth her way to the out near the town, right? Then she's going to enact a disguise self because we only get an hour. She goes into the town. She, um, oh, this is going to be good. I'm thinking, okay, so she goes into the town. She has a limited amount of time, right? Because that spell, that disguise self's only an hour. And if she needs to escape, then, you know, she could hit that, that hidden step, um, move action, dash, because she gets it until the start of her next turn. So that could give her, you know, a good uh, head start of in, in escaping if she needed to. Because that, that's thinking that's what's going to happen. Okay, so. Let's get some notes together. Okay. Now, she will need to leave town you know, before too long or disguise self goes away, revealing her fur bog nature. And a fur bog in this town on a night they're celebrating the anniversary of this fight is not going to be a welcome sight. The townsfolk, Grumpo, are likely to react poorly to a furbolg being here, like a real live furbolg. Revealing furbolg nature, which could spark outrage in the townsfolk. Okay. Now, if our players are already investigating, they might be investigating still. Remember the uh, the Deathlock White. Maybe maybe that Deathlock White has escaped and made its way here. And in the process, or at some point, we want to give the player some kind of role to notice something amiss about this person, um, this Furbolg, who's disguised self. So we can probably do a thinking maybe perception, a perception-based role. Maybe against her. Let's 
Let's go with deception. And we're going to go with the player. The player role is going to be perception because at this point they're not in. They're not like actively looking for something. It's festival time. They're having a good time. So if they roll high, if one of them rolls high enough on perception, i.e., beats this deception roll, then perhaps uh, they notice something's weird about this person in the festival. They're trying to get out. They look like they're kind of in a hurry, um, and um, that may prompt them to want to check it out. So let's go make a note of that. Okay. We'll say player. Perception versus Galen's Deception. To notice um, hurried looking townsfolk trying to leave the festival. Now, if the players intervene, if the players interfere, then it might put them in a situation, it might put Galen in a situation where her disguise self is going to wear off around people. And when that happens, um, if the players are involved, they, they might decide to intercede on a uh, on an outraged towns, uh, townsfolk who, uh, who, who see this enemy in their midst. So because if the players don't um, intercede and the townsfolk can get involved, well, she's going to try to fight her way out. Like, she, I mean, she's not going to surrender. She's going to try to, you know, maybe shoot a few people with some arrows and try to clear a path so she can escape, use her hidden thing, her hidden steps and such to try to get out of there. Because um, her goal isn't to, like, kill, you know, people, right? But she's trying to spy. And if things go bad like this, then she's not going to be leaving the town with a good impression of these townsfolk. It's been a year. Um, apparently, Apparently these townsfolk are still rabid and murderous and want to come steal our stuff, and that's what she's going to go back and report to her people. Unless the players find a way to get involved. So players may have to intervene to keep people from dying. Or they might just say, "Hey, to hell with it. Let's uh, let's let's go in with this uh, person and kill some people." You know, players are weird. Sometimes they are very unpredictable, which is one of the fun things about the game. It wouldn't be so fun if everything was so predictable and everything worked out as you expected to. That's you know, you like those those situations where the players make you go, "Ooh, hmm, okay, let me think about this a second. Okay. So we have a good situation with this festival, right? We have a good setup. Players are here. Festivals are here. Um, we have a in it. We have a spy in disguise who's likely to going to get discovered either by the townsfolk or the players. Most likely the players because they're the, they're going to once making the role to spot this person trying to leave, um, and then they'll have to do something. About, they may want to do something about that. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's that's a, now from here. What happens now from here? If our players have intervened. Um, you know, it, or it's, we got two things that could happen. One, um, Gailene can escape, right? She can get, make it out because that's, that's her goal. She wants to escape. Let's make, let's make a note of that. Gailene's goal. I think I've spelled this differently every time I've typed it, but that's okay. We know what we mean. Diff is to escape. Willing to kill to do so. But she's not murderous. She's not looking to just kill a bunch of people. Now, if she escapes, she's going back to warn her people. Look, I think something's going down. These uh, these uh, these townsfolk haven't changed in the last year. But now we got a copper dragon on our side. She will warn people of town's hostility. And again, this is if the players don't intercede, if they're able to, because they might be able to intercede with her. They might even broker some kind of, uh, they might try to broker some kind of talks between Grumpo and Gailene and see if, uh, you know, hey, is there, you know, what's going on? You know, why, are, why do you two dislike each other so much? But remember now, Grumpo's not going to want to come clean on a lot of things because he's enjoying his status as the folk hero of this town. 
So players have a chance to intervene here. However, however they want. All right, just taking a quick look up back up here, see what else we got we have lined up in store. We got to figure out a way to incorporate this violet fungus as well as the wormling dragon. But I think this wormling dragon is going to be hanging out at the uh, the 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 tribe, uh, the fur bulk tribe. All right, so this is a good setup, and this is where we're gonna this is where we're gonna stop it for now. We're gonna we'll develop the rest of this on the on the next video. But yeah, this is pretty cool because we got a you know I, I like festivals in a game. It's it's the festivals are like rich for you know players to do stuff. You can come up with activities. You know they can think of you know they can think of anything because a lot of players are like oh did they have this and you can say oh yeah they got that it's over here and you can kind of quickly come up with an idea to represent whatever activity festival activity they're wanting to do. Um, and then, as the festival's going on, you can introduce things that happen to, you know, to draw some, some excitement. All right, friends. Well, thank you for hanging out. Then uh, we'll uh, be, set, uh, be setting, up this, setting this up and going to do the next video probably... You know, I'm not sure. It's weird because it's the holidays and all my players have like holiday stuff going on, which is fine. And we're, you know, some of, you know, a couple of my games are actually on hold, but that's cool too until, you know, the holiday scenes is over where we pick things back up. Um, so just stand by, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be putting these out uh, you know, regularly. Um, if, if we don't have a game session to put up, then I'll do another one of these. All right, friends, take it easy. I'll have, have a good day. I'll talk with you later.